and night, night and day, I let incense arise, day and night, night and day, let incense arise, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. I want to obey, obey the Holy Spirit right now. Just keep keep the atmosphere going right now. God has something for someone really special right now. And this may sound strange. 
I don't do these kind of things unless the Holy Spirit speaks to me. But somebody's right toe is hurting them right now. I want to know who that is right now. I want you to raise your hand right now. It's not to embarrass anybody, but God's Behind got a word you. for you. Right toe. Behind you. Right toe. Wow. <clears throat> the Lord says to you, my brother, this morning, this day, your right toe represents authority. I'm just speaking as the Lord is speaking and telling me right now. The right toe represents authority because it's one of the priestly anointings to anoint the right ear, also the right thumb, and the right toe. And God says that you are a priest in my kingdom. And I'm bringing about order. I'm bringing about order. But the reason you've got to have that right toe anointed, I want you to see it along with the ear, with the right thumb, and the right toe is because I'm bringing balance right now into your life. You are a balanced man. Never again think that you're out of balance. God says you're right where you need to be. You are a balanced man man because you are a priest of God. Father, I thank you for this man. I thank you for his humility, God. I thank you that he's a servant in your kingdom. And I thank you, God, that he's a priest, God. He's a priest in your kingdom. And you have brought about the anointing this morning of your word. And Lord, I thank you. And right now, if his toe is, is hurting this morning, I speak life to that toe right now in the name of Jesus. And I cast out the spirit of infirmity and whatever's making it sick, God. But you say it's an anointed toe in Jesus name hallelujah give God some praise in the house. now for some of you that don't know your, your, your Hebrew background because that's where salvation comes through amen and if you don't understand this is that when a priest was anointed with the holy anointing oil, that Aaron would anoint the right ear and the right thumb and the right big toe. But I hadn't had, I did not remember that until right now. So help me before the Lord God. Just saw somebody's right toe hurting. You know, don't despise the little things, amen, because God works in the little things, amen, to bring about great things. Hallelujah. Just keep the atmosphere, stay in His presence. Amen. Yeah, I want you to stand up just a moment. <clears throat> the Lord has called you as an Esther. I want you to receive that word this morning. God says you're an Esther, that your call forth is such a time as this. But God says it's time for you to just eat from my table. Eat from my table, saith the Lord. Because I'm bringing about the purposes that you've always dreamed about. You've always had this dream. You've these many, many dreams about the purposes of God. God, how could you use me? So God is calling you forth this morning as an Esther in His kingdom to stand up for what is right and righteous. And your life will make a, a difference and a purpose. And no matter what the enemy or they or whoever they were said about you, we nullify it this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life because your life is blessed. God says your life is blessed your life has always been blessed. Open the eyes to my table and come and eat of me, saith the Lord. Unless you eat of me and drink my blood, you will always feel like that there's no life in you. But God says, come to my table and eat. And you begin to see yourself as a queen 
my queen and you will live your purpose in Jesus name I bless you my sister amen and amen amen give the Lord a clap hand of praise not me him amen Warren Hicks, God has given you an amazing mind. And the truth is, you have the mind of Jesus Christ. And the word of the Lord came to me and says, I want you to put your right hand upon my son Warren, in whom I'm well pleased. God is drawing you, son, into great and marvelous things. The Lord says, I did not make you like anyone else. So don't try to be like anyone else. I made you special. You are my vessel for such a time as this, and you will do amazing things. And it will affect the entire nation, this nation, because of the things that you are going to do through me. You receive that? Amen. Amen. You're accepted, you're loved, and you're different. Because God called you to be different. Don't you ever let nobody take that away from you, Warren. God called you to be different. You're not, like, you're not to be like everyone else. Because you're very special to God and His kingdom. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. 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 Oh, I got to obey one more. I want you youth, all of you youth, to, to you two come and stand right here beside them. And I want you to all hold hands together. I want you to hold hands together. I'm hearing the Lord speak to me this morning to say this is that disunity must stop in the name of Jesus Christ and God is calling forth you youth to exhibit his unity <clears throat> it's there where God commands the blessing and yes, most pastors would tell you that this is something that you carry into the school. But it's something God is saying to me right now to tell you, you must bring it into your home. The power of God that's in every single one of you, you must bring it into your home. And you will be empowered to impart unity in your home. And when you do that in your home, God says, I will light that fire that you're able to share and unite your school and unity to my name. It is time that the name of Jesus be exalted within our schools. And God has called you to do that in your own way. He says, my name shall be exalted among the nations. There's been too, many, too much stuff told in the schools that's not of God. But God Almighty says, my name shall be exalted among the nations. And it's got to begin now in the homes. It's got to begin in the schools. It's got to begin in the colleges. Because how else will you get it into the nations unless the youth the middle aged and the older folks come together in unity and begin to exalt God's name. So this morning, we bless you. I want you to stretch your hand toward these youth this morning. Father, we bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that they are fire. They are fire power of the Holy Spirit and they will bring unity into their homes as well as in their schools and in the colleges and into this region and into this nation. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Somebody give him some praise in this house this morning. Glory to God. It's important that you see this and your eyes mind that you see it 
if you miss seeing it, then you just think, well, that was a pretty good word. But I don't do that unless that's from God. So it's so important that you see that, that you see that in your mind's eye this morning. Somebody give Jesus a praise here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, our, our, our children, y'all can be seated. Our children's pastors, if you'll come forward, and we're going to dismiss our children. All you children want to go to children's church this morning. My goodness. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wow. We are grateful for these children. Hallelujah. Father, raise your hand toward the, our, our children, our children's pastor this morning. Father, we just we love you and we thank you for these blessed children because they are certainly a blessing and an example toward us. And we ask that you open the eyes of their understanding to receive your implanted word today. In Jesus' name, we bless them. Amen and amen. God bless y'all. Go have a good time and learn all about Jesus. Amen. I've got... Uh, Um, would uh, Brother Tony and Tracy Lewis come forward, please? <clears throat> would y'all turn around and face all these folks out here that's your spiritual family? Uh, this is Brother Tony and Sister Tracy Lewis, and they have desired to unite with this church here as members so what do you what do you think solid rock <laughs> hallelujah yeah amen amen <clears throat> amen you see who god calls here i'm certainly not going to reject and we're we are so thankful really to have you guys y'all are just beautiful people inside and out and i love this about you brother tony you're not ashamed of jesus but you're certainly not ashamed of how much you love this woman right here i think every every man should love his wife like this man loves her amen amen, amen. so i want to present y'all this morning with uh, a membership certificate to solid rock church so this is your sister tracy and also to you brother tony and, and we're very grateful and so pleased that y'all are here and part of our family do you want to say anything i'm just blessed to be here i love i just love this body of christ it's just amazing awesome it's place amazing. this is awesome awesome place i love it well god bless y'all and y'all you're in <laughs> <laughs> you're in because jesus said you was in amen. amen amen let's give them a hand god bless amen thank y'all love you love y'all well we had an amazing time in, in course uh uh, Sister Tracy, Brother Tony, as well as Sister Tanya and Keith Parker was with us last night at the Tree of Life. Uh, I, 
inauguration, they called it, but grand opening of our Hispanic brothers and sisters here. It was just absolutely off the chart and amazing. Uh, other than being here, I've never been around such humble, gracious, serving, anointed people of God. They, were, they, they treated us like kings and queens there, did they not? And uh, an amazing word from God that so spoke to my heart last night from the apostle that founded, has founded, uh, I believe it's the five churches now. It began in Russellville and then one planted here in Haleville, uh, one in Corinth, Mississippi, and I believe the other one in Decatur, if that's four, four or five. Is that correct? Yeah. But it was just amazing. And the word he preached last night, I, I, I so needed to hear that. So thank you. And thank you, Tree of Life. I cannot pronounce the uh, Hispanic name. Uh, but it's if you see that, it's the church out here on the left as you're going on 195 headed towards Double Springs closest to the hospital but just a wonderful group of people. And good news I have for you, we're going to have them here sometime in September or around the first week of October. They're going to come. Pastor Sturgio is going to preach the gospel. Of course, he will do it in uh, Spanish, and they'll have an interpreter as well. And their worship team is just amazing. I mean awesome. And, and they'll sing it in Spanish and also sing it in English. And guess what? They do all the songs that we do. <laughs> I think they threw a couple in there that I didn't know. But it reminded me of being in Israel when, I mean, everybody's dancing and, and shaking the tambourines and all. That's not, that's not Pentecostal, my friend. That's been Holy Ghost around a long time. Amen. That's what we do. We just get happy in the Lord. Boy, this is already just an amazing day. <laughs> this is just an amazing day. Are you blessed already? Well, you're fixing to get a great blessing this morning. Uh, i got to answer one more question. I have several people that keep asking me, how do I sow into this ministry? How can I give my tithes and offerings? And you, you guys know me. I don't beg people for money. I, I shouldn't have to. God wrote it in His Word, and that's good enough for me. But I do have people say, even people from other churches uh, how can I give to the Solid Rock Church because we really love what y'all do there and all the ministries that you support. And so I I'm going to say this. You can mail a check to Solid Rock Church and to P.O. Box 1029, Hay Level 35565. Or you can, uh, if you're here today, we have that chest over there. Just open up the chest and... And all I'm doing is I'm answering your question and put the tithes or offering, whatever it is, in the chest. Or you can give by cash app on your phone at dollar mark and all small letters Solid Rock Haleyville. And you can give by cash app. So I answered those questions. I'm not here begging for money, so don't anybody let the devil talk to you and say, Hey, he's just like all the preachers. You know, all they want your money. No, I don't. All, all God wants is all of you, and he'll have all your money. <laughs> somebody give the Lord a clap. I heard a, a couple on that, and somebody got afraid they'd done said too much. I am so pleased this morning to sit down and receive one more time before next Sunday. An amazing man of God that I have known for a long, long time. I don't know how many years that I've known him. Knew his wife way before I ever knew him. I'll never forget meeting with Sister Linda in her mom and dad's home back in the early 70s during the Jesus movement. And we were so excited sitting around in a a room just packed full of people. And we'd already had church, so don't tell me it's just the Pentecostal assemblies of God or Church of God folks that love to go long. No, we were missionary Baptist people back then, and we loved to go long because we just hungered and thirst for more of Jesus. But I'll never forget sitting in that room and Linda 
began to tell the stories to all of us about what she had heard was happening, uh, about people being raised from the dead and people receiving healing, miraculous healings and limbs growing. And I know that sounds strange to some of you, but the, the supernatural things began to happen and was happening during that move of God. And how many are with me today that we're going to see that again? Amen. I believe we're going to see that again. I don't believe God gave a vision for this church here and for this county for us to not see His great awakening and revival. But Pastor Gary Wakefield and Linda, they founded their first church here in Haleyville in 1980. And it was called at the time Faith Teaching Center. I remember that. I absolutely do. And you taught many, many people the Word of God. And I believe if I'm, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Pastor Ricky White was a student of, of that teaching as well. And I've heard him speak of you at other places, you and Linda, and how much he learned from that ministry. But Pastor Gary Wakefield, I say this about you. I have not found a single person ever in my life that would ever say one negative word about you. I wish I could say that about me. But that wouldn't be true. But Gary Wakefield, if you know anything on him that's negative, I don't want to hear it because the devil probably told you that and it's a lie anyway. But I've never met such a humble, kind-hearted, loving person in my life. And I asked uh, Pastor Gary this morning uh, what was his passion. And I told him in my office, I said, I already know the answer, but I want to hear you say it. And his passion is to preach the gospel and to see people repent, be saved, set free, delivered, and healed. That is his passion. That is his heartbeat. Now, he has three children and nine grandchildren. So we can call you Poppy as well, if that's all right. And I don't mean that disrespectful, but anybody that's got nine grandchildren, they deserve some honor. So let's stand to your feet this morning and give... Pastor Gary Wakefield, a great solid rock. Welcome as he comes. Come on, church. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. Well, I do this just about every time I preach. Y'all stood for me, but let's stand for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My Father God is here. My Savior Jesus is here. And the Holy Spirit is here this morning to meet whatever need you came in this door with and to equip you to go out there and meet other people's needs as we leave. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. Well, praise the Lord. I am excited to be here. I'm excited to preach. Uh, I've um, um, kind of been quiet for a while, and, and um, I'm tired of being quiet. Come on, brother. But, but I, I, I preach at home. Ask my grandkids if I don't preach to them. I preach in the car. Uh, I, I, preach, I preach all the time. But uh, it, it's just great to be here. You know, I thought it interesting, some of the things that Pastor Benny said about my, my wife, Linda. And uh, 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 let me tell you, she was uh, a better preacher, a better teacher. Uh, she, she was better than I have ever been by far. And for those of you who got to hear her teach and preach, you know she was an amazing woman of God. <clears throat> and, and I do, I do honor her today because she, let me tell you, she was my encourager. She encouraged me. I, I'm telling you, when I knew, I, I really felt like sometimes she would lie to me because when I knew that I just messed up in the pulpit and, and, and it was just a big flop, 
any preacher, most all preachers have, have had that feeling before. But I'd get in the car and I'd say, I just don't know. And she, and she would look at me and she'd say, you preached a good sermon. It was good. Don't say another word. You know, she would, she would encourage me. She would pray with me. She would pray on the church and uh, on the way to church. And she would pray for me. Uh, and, and I did the same thing for her. But he mentioned her talking about healings. Now, she, she, was, uh, she was blessed to be able to go to one of Catherine Kuhlman's meetings at the very end of her ministry, at the end of her life. She was blessed to go there, so you know she saw healings. It, you know, if you know anything about Catherine Kuhlman, you know that there were multiple, many healings, thousands that would take place in every crusade that she did. I mean, I mean, uh, and it didn't matter. It, it reached across uh, denominational borders. There were Baptists, Church of Christ, Methodists, Pentecostal. And, and there were people from all denominations that were healed through Catherine Kuhlman's ministry. And, and, and Linda was so blessed, and she talked a lot about being able to do that. But he talked about miracles. The title of my sermon today is Restored Faith for Miracles. Amen. Restored Faith, and he didn't know that. Uh, I hadn't showed him any of my notes, hadn't talked to him about uh, any passage of Scripture or anything. I, I gave some Scripture, uh, I, I gave an index card to uh, uh, Pastor Daniel, uh, you know, so he could put up some, but, but I'll be reading a lot of Scripture and referring to a lot of Scripture that won't be up on the screen today. But I want us to start by going to Mark, and you're, and you're really quiet, so... That's, that's going to change. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. I, I want to read a couple passages of Scripture because, because I, I want you to know why uh, uh, there were so many healings through Jesus' ministry. I, I, of course, he was Jesus. He was the Son of God. But he was also a man when he walked the face of this earth and, and I, I, just, I just want to tell you if, if you if you came this morning expecting then you will get something Amen. if you did not come expecting then you will not get anything and you'll go home exactly how you came and, and I'm telling you, you think, well, well, what do I expect? You know, we, we've got to stop expecting the same old thing when we come to church. That's right. I mean, God wants to do some great and awesome things, but our expectation is very low of what he can do. And, and I, I want to share with you, there, there are reasons why our expectation uh, is low, but, but we have allowed our, our excitement and our zeal for the Lord to just wane because of the, the, the things we've gone through and the, the trials and, and everything that's going on in the world today. And Pastor Benny has been preaching his heart out on Wednesday night about getting back to the Word and knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. And, 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 and taking the word and casting down thoughts and imaginations of, of yourself, of, 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 of I, I, you know, I can't do anything and I'm not worthy and all that. I'm telling you, in order for us to do what God wants us to do, we have to be confident in him. We have to be confident in who he is. We have to be confident in, in what he did and what he wants to do in this last day. I'm telling you, God, God wants to do some great things, but we come with a low expectation and we get exactly what we expect. I'm telling you, if you don't lift, raise your expectation when you walk through that door, I'm telling you, you did not come here to see me, I hope. You did not come here to see each other, I hope. I'm glad to see you. I love you. You are my family, and, and, and I would come if you were the only ones that was going to be here. But I'm telling you, we need to realize that when we come into this house, that 
the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here. He is here to He is here to receive your worship. And I'm telling you, it, it is ordained of God, the order of service that we have, because when you look at the, the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I'm telling you, when we worship Him, which you did this morning, which we did this morning, worship was absolutely awesome today. I'm telling you, but it's awesome every time I come. I, why? Because I come to worship Him. I didn't, I didn't come to please anybody. I didn't even come to sound good because, you know, I don't really sound good. But, but anyway, I didn't come to sound good. I come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm telling you what, when we do that, we set the stage and, 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 and we lift our expectancy because I'm not looking for anything from man. I'm looking for something from the Lord himself and he will deliver it through a man. Amen. We're just servants. I'm just a servant. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. Yeah. I'm telling you what the reason why churches are not full today is not COVID. Come on, it is not COVID. It, we, we, were, we were experiencing that before COVID ever came. I'm telling you, it's not. The reason why we are not seeing the churches full is because we're not going out and noising abroad what the Lord is doing in this house. I'm telling you, we've had salvations. We've had people healed. We've had people delivered. We've had people set free. I want to tell you, when somebody noises abroad that Jesus is here, not that Gary's here, not that Pastor Benny's here, I love my pastor. I'm telling you, don't say anything negative about him. Uh, uh, he shared his life with us. We know, but that's all the past. It's under the blood. That's not who he is. Uh, I mean, he is a priest and a king, and he is a great pastor. I love him with all my heart. Don't say anything negative to me about my pastor. You know, because I love him. And I, I love his wife. I love you. Don't say anything negative about the people that I go to church with because I love you. I love you. I, I said it's time we started praying for people. Every time we hear something, okay, we're going to pray about that. And that's all we're going to do. Amen. Before you decide to put some garbage on Facebook, I'm telling you that is absolutely sickening. I, I, I don't know where I'm going, but anyway, the Holy Spirit does. I, that is absolutely sickening for me to see somebody that I know is a born-again believer trash somebody on Facebook because they hurt your feelings. What did Jesus say for you to do? Forgive them. They don't even have to ask for your forgiveness. Forgive them. Because you are holding yourself in bondage and you're keeping yourself from doing what God wants you to do in the earth. So it would do some people good just to, just to not even get on Facebook. I'm telling you. It would just do them good. But anyway, it says... And it was noised abroad that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. Wouldn't you like to see that in this house? I'm telling you, when we go out talking about Jesus instead of everything else under the sun, we are going to attract people and make them want to ask, where do you go to church? Amen? Amen. When you walk into a man's business, which uh, Susan and I did that yesterday, I had a watch that needed a link put in the band, and, and, and we went to Russellville to a jewelry store, and, and uh, grandkids, some of the grandkids went with me, but we went up there, and, and uh, before we left, we said, can we pray with you? He had just started a new church in Russellville, Alabama. I don't know how exactly how long it's been started, but I'm telling you, it was great to go in and just pray with him. That's what we need to do, people. 
We need to we need to begin to go into the highways and byways. Go into Walmart and pray for. I mean, you may not be able to. I don't want to get anybody in trouble and get somebody fired because I'm talking to them. But it don't take but a minute just to say, "I bless you in the name of Jesus." God is good. When we start doing that, this place is going to be so full. There was no room to receive them. I am looking for that to happen at Solid Rock Church. Amen. That there is no room to receive. Amen. They're standing at the door. Amen. 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 Why? Because we're supposed to bear fruit. Yeah. Right. Amen. You say, well, I, I, I'm happy with just a little crowd. I'm not happy with just a little crowd. Everywhere Jesus went, he drew a crowd. He drew multitudes of people. Why? Because he taught them the word. And he healed them. And he had compassion on them. Let's go. And straightway, many were gathered together in as much as there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word of God unto them. And they, and they come unto him, bringing the sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, uh, son thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. I'm going to stop there. I don't care what people think. I'll just, I'll just address that scripture with, I don't care what you think. Amen. If you've got faith, we can see people healed. Amen. He saw their faith. What are we doing to get people to Jesus that's sick? What are we doing? Are, 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 we, are we going out and, and, and getting them here no matter what? Uh, I, you know, I, I, I've decided, I, I've started calling that van that I bought that I don't like because the tree hit my car and, and totaled it and I had to buy another vehicle. And, and I bought this van th thinking I liked it, but now I don't really like it. But now I'll call it the Wakefield bus. So if you need a ride to church, it can, it, it can give you a ride. What are we doing to get people to come to church? Are we just satisfied with just coming every Sunday and not, not, not talking to people, not noising abroad that Jesus is going to be in the house? If I didn't believe Jesus was here, I wouldn't be coming here. Amen? If I did, the, the Bible says, when we gather together in his name, where is he? He is right here this morning. Amen? Amen? We need to tell people that. We need to tell people what the Lord's doing and what he wants to do. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter 5. I turned too far. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. They were excited about what he had to say. Well, did you come in excited this morning about the preaching of the gospel? I know we get excited about worship. I know we get excited about music. I, I, you know, but, but are you just as excited right now or are you looking on your phone? I don't, I don't see anybody doing that. So you can't say he's preaching to me because I'm looking at my phone. You know, you may be using your phone for a Bible. That's, that's okay. But a lot of people use that for an excuse. And please don't tell that that's what you're doing if that's not what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I tell my grandkids this morning uh, because you know we all have have uh, that we all have that you know that 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 temptation if we've got it laying right there in the seat to look at it. Yeah. We all have that. I told them this morning. I said, if I see y'all have a cell phone when when church is over, I'm taking it. That's good, brother. Amen. Now I can't do that to you. 
Somebody needs to. You say, but I'm an adult. Well, grow up. Be responsible. Y'all love me, don't you? Okay. What happened when they pressed in to hear the word? When they, when they pressed in and they received the word, that, that's when uh, 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 Simon Peter and them had fished all night and didn't catch anything, and Jesus, and Jesus preached the word, and he used their boat, and then they went out, and guess what happened? They caught a bunch of fish. That, that was a miracle. They had, they had fished all night and not caught anything. When the word is being preached, it's an atmosphere for a miracle. Amen. Let's look at a few miracles that Jesus did when he was here. He turned water into wine. Everybody's had a problem with that one, but anyway. Come on. Come on. He turned water into wine. He healed the demoniac. He healed Peter's mother when she had a high fever. He healed a leper. He healed a paralytic. He calmed a storm. He cast out a legion of demons. He healed a woman with an issue of blood. He healed Jairus' daughter. He healed the two blind men. He healed a cripple at the pool of Bethesda. He healed many and fed 5,000 people uh, who were sick. He healed the sick that were Gennesaret. How many miracles did Jesus do? You know, we want to we want to say, well, there were a few miracles that he did while he was on. I'm telling you what, you cannot number the miracles that Jesus did while he was on the earth. Who knows how many miracles he did? You don't. You can't count them and nobody can because it's a, it is impossible to give an actual account. There are several passages that says he healed many or he healed the multitude. He healed uh, the, uh, a crowd of people. I'm telling you, miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I'm telling you, it is time that we start seeing more miracles in the church. Yes, amen. amen. Why? If you'll look at these incidents, you'll see some reasons that set the stage for the healing. And the first one I've already said, there was expectation. Oh. Are you expecting anything to happen? Except for the same old, same old. There was expectation. The word was taught. That's, that's another, another reason you know. Faith comes by hearing. How do we get faith to be healed? How do we get faith to be saved? It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The people heard and they believed. They simply believed the Word. Do you come in today expecting anything this morning? Are you here because that's what you've always done? That's what you do? And that's what you've done since you got saved? You just go to church? That's because that's just what we do. Are we expecting our situation to change? Or have we just learned to live with it? Some people have just learned to live with it. That is so wrong. Because we serve a God who is able to take care of it yes, and to annihilate the thing if it needs to be. Just holding on till we get to heaven. Do you still believe in miracles? Amen. Some of you do. You said amen. Do you still believe in miracles? Yes. If you still believe in miracles, you ought to be excited this morning if you need one. Amen. Amen? If you don't need anything, are you believing for someone else? Like the four friends that, that, that brought the man to Jesus and left, uh, put him down through the roof. Are you laying hands on the sick? Mark 16, 18 gives us a command. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who is they? They is you. 
and me. You say, but I'm sick. Let me tell you, I told you about Catherine Kuhlman. She had a lot of ailments, physical ailments. Her anointing was not for her. Her anointing was for the, the crowd that she preached to. Your anointing is not necessarily for you. It's for you to lay hands on other people. My anoint, uh, you know, I've had some physical problems in my body, but I want to tell you as long as there's breath in my body, I'm going to believe this word right here that says by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. I am whole. The Bible says, and, and David said, my heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. First of all, my heart is fixed on Jesus. And he is my healer. Amen. Yes. Amen. We worship you, Lord, this morning. Have you stopped sharing Jesus because you've lost hope and you're just hanging on because you're afraid to let go? That's pitiful. Because Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. A victorious church. That, you know, we, we, we got to stop Poor mouthing ourselves and poor mouthing the church and, and talking about, about how bad the church is. I want to tell you, you're talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. If you think we're going, we're just going to quietly go out of here, you're wrong. We're not quietly going to exit this place. We are going to go triumphantly in grand and glory style when the king of kings and the lord of lords comes back we are not going to be quiet so you shouldn't be quiet now amen, amen. it's time to get your faith back i believe covid was designed by the enemy to stop the church from believing in miracles and healing because we all know somebody that's died from covid I want to tell you, it doesn't change the Word of God at all. Some were my very, very dear friends. I just did a funeral for a very dear friend of mine on Friday that I loved dearly. Died from COVID. And I, I want to tell you, if we allow the enemy to stop us because of a disease, then we don't believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a bold statement, but it's true. I'm not saying I'm not saying I have a I have a mask in this pocket and I have a mask in this pocket. If I feel like I need to put it on, I will, and my job requires me to wear a mask. If you if you have to wear a mask, come. You know? If you're sick, you know, stay home and call for the elders of the church and they'll pray for you. But let's not let the enemy win over this disease. Amen. Don't let it happen. Look at the miracles in the Bible and renew your faith to believe again. Faith comes by hearing. You need to start reading uh, all four Gospels and reread them and reread them and reread them and reread them and reread them. And let it build faith on the inside of you because I don't know anybody that doesn't need a miracle in their life. More importantly, more than anything else, you need, to, you need to renew your relationship with a miracle worker who is Father God. Renew your relationship with a miracle. That's where the problem is. Our relationship with him is not as close as it was. Or it's not as close as it needs to be. Amen. We need to renew our relationship with the miracle worker. Have you quit believing in miracles because someone died? And I know it's easy. I know it's easy to quit believing when the love of your life dies. And, 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 and several of you, 
even, if, even recently. You know what it's like to lose a loved one. But I am not going to stop believing. Because number one, my wife would not want me to do that. And she's up there waiting for me. And if you've lost a loved one that knew Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they're up there. They've joined that great cloud of witnesses saying, I'm cheering you on. You can make it. Keep, keep serving the Lord. Keep preaching the gospel. Keep winning lost souls to the kingdom of God. Keep laying hands on the sick and watch them recover. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Don't quit. Don't quit. Have I wanted to quit? Yes. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I had kids and I had people praying for me for, because the first two years after my wife passed away, I said, Lord, just let me die. And I want to tell you, that was wrong for me to do that. I will admit that. I confess that as sin because that's not what God wanted or I would have gone when she did. That's not what God wanted. God has a purpose and a plan for every one of you that is sitting in this room today and part of that purpose and plan is to preach the gospel to the lost. Amen. Did I want to quit? I wanted to quit. I, I, I wanted to quit. There is a grieving process that we need to go through. And I want to tell you six years later, I've still had to deal with that. But I'm going to deal with it every time it comes up. And I'm going to say, devil, you get behind me, Satan. God has me here for a purpose. I'm, I want to stay until that purpose is fulfilled. And has he ta has the enemy taken people out before their time? Yes, he has. I don't believe that God put sickness on anybody. I don't believe that, that he put COVID on anybody. Uh, he doesn't have sickness and disease. He doesn't work against himself and say, I am your healer and then now I'm going to make you sick. He doesn't make anybody sick. Yeah, right. Amen. How can I believe that he may, he's going to make people sick? He doesn't make you sick to teach you something. You can learn something in that sickness. He can't make you sick. He don't have sickness and disease. He can't give you something he don't have. But it's the devil that makes people sick. It's the Lord that heals and I don't know about you, but I have some miracles that I'm believing for. So I want my faith to be increased for a miracle this morning. I pray that that's what this sermon does, is it increases your faith for a miracle this morning. If you've quit believing, I want to tell you, start believing again. You haven't completely quit or you wouldn't be here this morning. Start, it's, it's time to start believing again for a supernatural move of the Spirit of God. It's, stop, it's time to stop living from crisis to crisis and live from power to power because you are empowered by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. In Zechariah 4, 6, it says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. It's time for a miracle. It's time we see miracles on a regular basis at Solid Rock Church. Amen. How? By believing it can happen. By believing that God still heals. Amen. The greatest miracle of all, and I'm going to conclude with this. Luke 10 verse 20. He said, don't rejoice because demons are subject unto you, but rejoice because your name is written in heaven. The greatest miracle of all, of all times, is the miracle of salvation. Amen. If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, make today the day that that miracle happens. Amen. Make today that day that that miracle happens. As Sister Bonnie begins to play, Pastor Benny comes 
up to the altar. We want to pray with you this morning. You know, we have a, a pastor whose heart is, is passionate to see the lost. That's the one thing he prayed. I think, I think I heard him pray two or three times up here on the platform and in his office. Lord, that somebody would get saved today. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, don't leave this room without receiving your miracle. Because it's going to be, it's a miracle. New birth is a miracle. If you're here this morning and, and, you, and you've, you've lost your faith, you just don't believe in miracles anymore, I want you to come up. I, I, want, I want you to have hands laid on you. I want you. I want you to decide, hey, I believe this word from the beginning to the end. God wants us to experience some miracles in this house. Are you ready for your miracle today? Anybody that needs a miracle today, would you dare come and just come up here and believe God? Anybody? We, we, need to, we need to learn to respond to the altar call again. You need to learn to respond to the altar call again. We need to be quick to respond to an altar call again. We need to be quick to respond. If you need prayer for anything, something going on in your marriage and in your in your in with your kids, something going on with your business, something going on that you need the Lord to touch to minister to you. We need to be quick to come to the altar again. You know the reason why sometimes we don't see people come like they used to is because we've stopped believing that anything's going to happen when we come up here. We've got to start believing again. We've got to start believing. We've got to start bringing everything to the altar. Bring it to the altar this morning. Amen. Bring it to the altar. Bring it to the Lord. The one who made the blind to see. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. There's no God like you. There's no God beside you. We worship you, Jesus. The one who made the day. We worship you, Lord. We worship you.
feel the rains of your love. We feel the winds of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear.
your miracle this morning that you expected and you received today. And I pray that if you were one of those prodigals that you came home today and I also pray if you was not saved that today is the day of salvation for you as well. Write us or text us or give us a message there on Facebook and let us know that you gave your heart and life to Jesus or that you was here healed and a miracle just happened today. Thank you again, Pastor Gary. Amazing, awesome, on-time word. Praise God. Would you all stand to your feet and we'll be dismissed today. I want you to be blessed. Father God, I just, I love your people. And we as your people, we love you. We came in blessed and we'll go out blessed. And Lord, we have the heart that because you give us your heart how could we not be a blessing to others we are we came in blessed we will go out blessed and we'll be a blessing to others lord open the gates open the gates and the opportunities today and every single day for us to tell someone about you and your love for them as the love that we've received freely from you, let us freely give it to others as we go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless each and every one of you as a blessed people of God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed day.